Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is fairly straightforward. I'm seeing if I can use an off-the-shelf cooler, in this case, uh, Noctua NH-D15, granted a very beefy air cooler. We're gonna see if we can use that cooler to cool a Ryzen 5 1600, that's six cores and 12 threads. But the catch, of course, is we're not using the fans. This is purely passive cooling. Now before you start typing out your comments down below, I understand that the vast majority of you uh, would not go out and buy an NHD15 with the idea of using it as a passive cooler, especially for something like a Ryzen 5 1600, especially because the fans with NHD15 are very quiet and very, very good fans in the first place. And at best with a Ryzen 5 1600, we're already talking about an overkill cooler anyways. Maybe you just run those at a very low speed instead and get the benefit of having that constant airflow over the heat sinks. But I digress, uh, we're gonna do it just for fun and just to see if it's really something that could be done. The only other disclaimer I have to throw out there is we are not using traditional thermal paste with this test. We're actually using that graphite pad that I looked at a while back from I believe IC cooling. So no traditional thermal paste, just a graphite pad between the heatsink and the processor itself. And of course the NHD15 does come equipped with six heat pipes. So we should have quite a bit of cooling and we should be able to get the heat away from the processor. The real question here is whether the NHD15 can actually dissipate the heat without the help of fans blowing air across the heat sinks. So let's get it mounted and go ahead and hop into IDA64 and see what we're working with here. Okay, so this test has now been running for 20 minutes. You'll notice we did get all the way up to 94 degrees Celsius on that CPU, but our clock speeds are staying around the 3.2, sometimes dipping down to 3.1, and that's just to keep the temperature from going over that 95 degrees Celsius mark. But unless you're running this system for a very long period of time at full bore, 100% on the CPU, you're not gonna see the temperatures spike or get up this high. Not only that, but if you have this in a case, you are likely still going to want to have an exhaust fan or an intake fan. And those fans are likely to actually give you a little bit of passive airflow flowing through your heatsink. Whereas just sitting in an open test bench right now, there's absolutely no airflow being directed whatsoever at those heat sinks. So all that air is just sort of escaping out the sides over here where there's gaps in the fins and then traveling up. If I was putting this in an actual case, I would either make sure to have an exhaust fan on this side of the heat sink pulling air through it, or if you're not wanting to have that at all, then reorientate this sideways, turn it 90 degrees your heat sinks so that when it's standing upright, the air has a little bit easier time of escaping out the fins and just going straight up and out of hopefully what's an open top case there. So after I was finished, I went ahead and let the CPU cool back down, and then I ran a game of Overwatch just to see in a gaming setting how this solution would perform, and the Ryzen 5 1600 only ever got into about the 60s uh, degrees Celsius, so you're never gonna have to worry about frying your CPU in that type of gaming scenario. Now understand though, other games may take more advantage of the CPU cores and threads, so your performance will vary game to game on that, but I can't really imagine a scenario where your CPU is gonna get extremely hot under load while just gaming. Now if you're doing streaming on top of it, whole nother scenario, but if you're just looking to game, this actually is a perfectly good silent solution that will actually let you get your full performance out of uh, the Ryzen 5 1600, at least at stock settings. So there it is, you can in fact cool a modern processor, six cores and 12 threads, purely with an off the shelf air cooler just by taking off 
the fans, granted, you have to get a very beefy heat sink on those air coolers. You can't do something like, I'm sure a Hyper 212 Evo without the fan would not do anywhere nearly as good a job as the NHD 15. It's all about that surface area. The D15 there has six heat pipes along with two tower heat sinks, has a lot of surface area there and has the ability to carry that heat out away from the processor quickly. And that's why this works. This would not work on a cheapo uh, air cooler. You couldn't just pull the fan off the stock uh, Wraith Spire cooler, for example, and make this work. But hey, uh, it does work. And if you like this video, give it a like, share, subscribe, and comment. Is this something you would consider ever doing? Maybe you're somebody that is a freak about keeping your build silent. Maybe this is something you would actually consider doing. Let me know if you would down below. And of course, you can always follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I will let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.